In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Today is the uh, 16th Sunday after Pentecost. There's a program for the next uh, two weeks, because unfortunately, uh, next Sunday, we will not have Mass here. So next Sunday, there will be no Mass. There will be prayers at uh, 8 a.m., uh, normal prayers. So this Saturday is... Uh, First Saturday, so we'll have the Holy Hour, the first Saturday, Holy Hour, the first Saturday devotions after um, Mass. Next week we got the Feast of St. Teresa the Child Jesus, uh, our patroness. So we want to uh, invoke her and ask her to uh, uh, convert to Australia. We also have the uh, Feast of St. Francis of Assisi. Uh, for the Franciscans, and uh, of course he's the uh, patron of the Holy Father, so we should pay to St. Francis to convert the Pope, and then he might become uh, good. And, um, and the, the following Friday is First Friday, so First Friday and First Saturday are not together uh, uh, this uh, month, and it's the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary as well. So make sure you pick up a schedule uh, for the Masses uh, for this, uh, this um, these, next two, uh, these next two weeks. The epistle is from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. <coughs> Brethren, I pray you not to faint in my tribulations for you, which are your glory. For this cause I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom all paternity in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened by his Spirit with might unto the inward man, that Christ may dwell by faith in your hearts, and that being rooted and founded in charity, you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth to know also the charity of Christ, which surpasses all knowledge, that he may be filled unto all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do all things more abundantly than we desire to understand, according to the power that worketh in us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus unto all generations, world without end. Amen. Please stand for reading the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. At that time, when Jesus went into the house of one of the chiefs of the Pharisees on the Sabbath day to eat bread, they watched him. And behold, there was a certain man before him that had the dropsy. And Jesus answering spoke to the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? But they held their peace. But he, taking him, healed him and sent him away. And answering them, he said, which of you shall have an ass or an ox fall into a pit and will not immediately draw him out on the Sabbath day? And they could not answer to him, him to these things. And he spoke a parable also to them that were invited, marking how they chose the first seats at the table, saying to them, When thou art invited to a wedding, sit not down in the first place, lest perhaps one more honorable than thou be invited by him. And he that invited thee, and him come and say to thee, Give this man place, and then thou begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when thou art invited, go sit down in the lowest place, that when he who invited thee cometh, he may say to thee, Friend, go up higher. Then shalt thou have glory before them that sit at table with thee, because every one that exalted himself shall be humbled, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. <coughs> so all the fathers uh, should take note that uh, all paternity is named after God the Father. So that's the example. That's a very high example uh, that uh, the fathers have to follow. They have to imitate God the Father and say, well... I'm a father like him, and so I have to uh, do uh, for my family as he does for all his all his creatures and all for all the world. So that's what we have to do. But uh, 
uh, especially uh, uh, what he asks of the Father, St. Paul, in the epistle today, and what uh, uh, the fathers have to give to their children, is the spiritual life. He said that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened by his Spirit with might unto the inward man, that Christ may dwell by faith in your hearts, and that to being rooted and founded in charity. So we have to have the inward man. This is uh, uh, the, the, the spiritual man. Uh, we're made of body and soul. So the body, we never forget about the body. We're always concerned about the body. We're always taking care of the body. And uh, the importance of, with this COVID thing, the importance of the body and being safe and being uh, uh, healthy uh, is very much exaggerated and, and uh, it's because the world has forgotten about the inward man. The inward man, the spiritual man, forgotten about the soul and uh, they try to drive uh, out of us also uh, the spiritual life, the life of the soul. This is, uh, uh, they want men to have dead souls uh, so that uh, at their death the, the, the devil will drag them down into hell. And they want to kill souls, and they don't want to concern themselves. The world uh, wants to have no, nothing of the spiritual life in it, nothing of the inward man in it. And this is why if we, if we don't have the inward man, if we don't have the spiritual life, well then we'll become like the animals. And this is why the, the, the world today says there's no real distinction between men and animals, and we have to uh, uh, give the animals their rights, and uh, they have the right to the same resources we have, and we're taking unfair percentage of the resources, and all these uh, lies that the media tells us, and that uh, the, the uh, world tells us, because, and the governments tell us, because uh, we don't have uh, any care for the inward man, any care for the spiritual life, and we have to realize that's the inward man and the spiritual life that is the only important life in this world. That's the important life. The life of the body is completely uh, secondary. If we look at the saints, uh, they didn't concern themselves very much with the life of the body. They wouldn't, didn't worry about eating. They fasted much. They did penance. They, they uh, even um, uh, did uh, 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 tortured their bodies. They, they tortured their bodies to bring them into subjection to say the body must be subjected to the soul and it's the inward soul, the inward life, the spiritual life that is the important life. And so uh, this is the life that uh, lasts beyond this world and is the one that uh, will make us have eternal life with God. But if we don't have this inward life, well we also will not have eternal life. So we need the spiritual life. And we need to uh, devote ourselves to perfecting the spiritual life, to growing, growing in the spiritual life, growing in faith, growing in hope, growing in charity, that we may, uh, as uh, as St. Paul says, that we may comprehend uh, uh, with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, to know also the charity of Christ that that surpasses all knowledge. So this is what... St. Paul is telling us that we need to have the same charity that our Lord had, the same love that our Lord had. And the only way we can have this love is if we have faith. We can't have the same charity of our Lord if we don't have the same uh, faith of our Lord. So we need to have this faith and we need to grow in faith. And we, can nur- we need to nourish our spiritual life and make it grow. And so we nourish it uh, by prayer, by meditation, by uh, spending our raising our minds to God and asking God to illuminate our souls, illuminate our hearts, and uh, and fill our hearts with this charity, because uh, we cannot get faith on our own. No man can give himself faith. He has, to, he has to receive it as a gift from God. It's a gift from God, but God offers it to everyone in the world. His light shines upon every man that comes into this world. This is what the, uh, we say every day at the last gospel. So he does offer this faith to everyone, and uh, the faith then, once we do accept it, once we do get it, and we receive this gift from him, we have to be grateful to him for it, and we have to nourish it. We have to (coughs) nourish it uh, uh, so it's not lost. Firstly, so it's not lost, uh, so we don't lose it, so we don't uh, kill it, so we don't drive it out of our souls by 
by uh, not raising our hearts up to God and uh, praying to God. So we need to nourish our faith, and then we need to ask our Lord that we might uh, grow in faith. Because faith uh, is one of those virtues that admits of more or less. To some people, our Lord said, O ye of little faith, O ye of little faith. They had very little faith, some people did. And of course, there's others that have no faith, so there's those that have no, those who have little faith. And then to others, to uh, one woman, he said, Oh, woman, great is your faith. Great is your faith. She had great faith, that woman did. And uh, these were people that our Lord met. And so they didn't all have equal faith. And some had more faith than others. So it's not, uh, if we have any faith, we're one of the faithful. We say, yes, you're a member of the faithful. But uh, the faithful are not all equal in faith. And so we have to nourish our faith. We have to uh, study the truths of our faith and learn them better and love them more. And uh, we have to love each truth that the church teaches and embrace it and say, yes, I embrace uh, this truth. And uh, some truths uh, we read are hard to hear, hard to hear. So we have to embrace each of the truths of the faith. And we have to say, yes, this is my faith and try to grow in faith and live this inward life. And then the faith uh, must uh, help us to have uh, the hope. The confidence. Once we learn about God, we learn about the goodness of God, we believe in God, we believe in the goodness of God, well, we have confidence then that he'll help us to get to heaven, that he does want us in heaven. God wants us to come to heaven. He wants us to live in heaven with him for eternity, and he, he wants to give us the method and the means to get there. And this is our hope, that depending upon him and relying upon him, and uh, leaning on him, well, he will lift us up and then take us up then into heaven and give us this eternal life. And uh, faith and hope, uh, we see the goodness of God again, how good God is. When we have faith, we see his great goodness, and this gives us charity. Charity comes from faith. That's why we have to have the true supernatural Catholic faith to have true supernatural Charity. And there can be no charity, really, without the faith. If we don't have the faith, our, our charity is not a, a, a true charity. It's a natural goodness, maybe. Some people, many people, have natural virtues and natural goodness, but it's not supernatural. It's uh, merely natural. And a natural good deed and natural goodness cannot merit a supernatural reward. It can only merit a natural reward. So uh, we need to uh, have this supernatural charity uh, for God, firstly of all, and of course for others, that we try to uh, love them above all things, and then above, love God above all things, and then love them as we love ourselves and try to uh, share with them uh, the faith. This is the great, greatest gift we can give to anybody is to give them uh, the gift of faith. And so this is what uh, St. Paul is saying that fathers uh, must do for their children. Fathers must see to it, uh, as God sees to it to us, that, uh, that, uh, that you might have the inward man and the faith in their, in their souls. So this is what uh, God wants uh, Christian fathers to do. He wants them to propagate the faith in their own family and teach their children the faith and teach their children to love God and to love the Blessed Virgin Mary and to uh, honor the saints. Uh, so uh, uh, we need to uh, have this propagation of the faith. And this is uh, uh, this inward soul, this inward man is the, the man that we have to nourish then, and we have to nourish that he grows and uh, lives healthily, and we nourish him by prayer, by penance, by sacrifices, and by doing good, by doing good, and by denying ourselves and doing good uh, for ourselves and others. So we need uh, uh, holy fa fathers to make holy families. Uh, if our families are going to be holy, the father has to be holy, the father has to love and serve God, and set the example for the rest of the family. He has to say, well, God is my model. God the Father. That's who my paternity is named after. And God the Father. And if God does good to all his creatures, well, I have to do good to my creatures. My children, my, my wife, my family. This is who I have to do good to and who I have to lead uh, to heaven and to bring them to the happiness of heaven by having this uh, spiritual life of theirs develop, helping them to develop their spiritual life, helping them to 
uh, take up their daily crosses and say, listen, you have to take up your daily crosses as I, as I take up my daily crosses. So the father sets the example by taking up his daily cross and he sets the example for his wife and children and then they also uh, get the encouragement to take up their daily cross and uh, to, by that means, uh, to grow in faith. So let's realize that there's a, an infinite dif dif distance between the natural and the supernatural. The supernatural is infinitely far from the natural. And it's a, it's a distance that can only be bridged by the grace of God and by the help of God. But God has given us the supernatural life in our baptism, and that's the life he wants us to live. He wants us to live according to the inward man, which is the supernatural man, which is the man who is like God. And so we have to live that way, and uh, that's the way we will conquer the world. This is the way all the saints have done it, and uh, then we can compre comprehend uh, this mysterious breadth and length and depth and height that St. Paul wants us to be able to comprehend. We can comprehend that as the saints did comprehend it, and realize that uh, the supernatural life is the only life worth living. And that's why we must strive to get the habit of constantly raising our hearts and minds up above the natural, up above the mundane, <coughs> up to uh, the, the, the world of God, the world of heaven, the world of the saints, the world of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and this uh, world where we are, should already be living now, that we might live for them, with them for eternity in heaven. So let's ask Our Lady uh, to, uh, to be a good mother to us, and God to be a good father, God our Father, that our, our mother will help us to nourish the faith and nourish the graces that God has given to us, and uh, that uh, she will uh, shed these blessings upon us that come to her from our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.